Okay. Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. I'm so blessed to be here with you guys. I'm Marcy Steiner, and I'm Hi. from uh, Bethesda, the North Bethesda, Maryland area. Well, I'm not sure why. I'm not muted. But I'm going to continue to just mute mm -hmm. all and continue here. Um, so tonight, I am um, going to give a big thank you to Michelle and Sean for asking me to come on. Um, we're going to be talking about the invite. And it's one of my favorite things to talk about. Before we do, though, before we get into the invite, and we have special guests that are going to be um, uh, the Lupshas, I, I think, are on here. So we be, don't, don't hang up because 20 minutes into this call, um, you guys are going to be blessed with some incredible information. So definitely don't want to go anywhere. Um, but I want to remind everyone that we have, our company, Life Vantage, is so generous. You know, not all companies put out incentive trips, put out promotions, and our company does, and they do it on a regular basis. And as business owners, I have to say, we want to leverage every opportunity to move our business forward. In fact, winning promotions is part of that um, um, Master track. Sorry, I had a brain, brain, my brain went out for a second. I think I need another Axio. Um, part of the master track. There's several things that we do when we're running on the master track. One of them is always running for those promotions. And we were just at Elite Academy where we kicked off another promotion. And instead of going through all of the all of the requirements for the promotion, I'm going to share my screen and show you um, where the promotion is. So if you guys log in to the, the main company site, maybe, oh, I'm sharing my screen and then it's not there. Let me try to do this. No, wait a minute. What's happening here? Um, hmm. It was there a second ago. Stop sharing. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna explain to you where to go. Go to lifevantage.com. When you go to lifevantage.com or you go to your independent site, up at the top, you're gonna to see company as one of, the, one of the, the headlines. And under company, you'll see promotions. When you click on promotions, you'll see all of the promotions that are available to us. I would recommend going there and clicking on the trip to Mexico and looking and seeing how you earn points. Everybody can earn points, and based on how many points you earn, will de determine how much fun stuff you're going to get paid for from the company. And of course, leverage that with your team. You want to work backwards. Be thinking of a strategy. If you're convinced that you want to be on there, and of course, I got to tell you guys, I when I started my business, that was one of the things I did. I wanted to win every single trip, um, every incentive that the company had. Not only was it growing my business, but I got to hang with the other leaders in the company that were winning the trips. And when you're somebody that's running, even if you're somebody that wants to be a runner, you're a combination of the five people you spend the most time with, right? So if you yourself are getting yourself there, you're going to align with other entrepreneurs that are not only saying yes to being in the club of LifeVantage, but that are building this business as a business. And I assume if you're here on this training call tonight, you're building this business as a business. If you're not, decide today to do that because that energy, that commitment, that yes will attract others on your team that are going to follow you. If you're saying, oh, you know what, that's too hard. I don't think I'll ever win that. I'm not going to really go for that. Guess what? That's going to duplicate in your business. Everything you do is going to duplicate. So if nothing else, Run for that trip. Run for incentives, even the pay center program. If you're already a Pro 2 and in January you were paid as over Pro 2, do it again. Go and go build yourself a new Pro 2 business in your outside legs because what do you think your team's going to do? They're going to do what you're doing. Same thing. It's just a very simple trick to how to build a network marketing business. Duplicate. Do and say what hundreds and thousands of other people can and will do and say. Now, I wanna get started with the invite. 
I have to say, it can be, especially if you're here and you're new to Life Vantage, it can be overwhelming. It's like, oh my gosh, there's so much. You hear about this proven plan, you start getting, seeing this study and hearing this training, and there's so much to do. The reason I love the invite is because if you're going to launch your business or you want to relaunch your business right now, maybe you're saying, draw the line in the sand, March is like fresh new start, I'm going for this trip, I'm doing it. There's only two things you really, really need to know to build this business. Number one, you need to know how to invite. And number two, you need to know how to introduce. And the invite can be really simple. There's lots of different ways. I can tell you the way that I invite, but what I wanna say to you is that your invite must be your invite. The first thing you do before you invite is to build, is to know what you're inviting to. You would be like a blubbering idiot if you picked up the phone or you Facebook messaged someone to invite them someplace that you didn't know where you, it's like, okay, well, what are you inviting me to? I don't know. So the first thing is to really envision what kind of business are you building? What is the structure? Where are you going next in your business? Is the business that you're building, is it going to, are you going to get there without business partners? Are you looking to, um, enroll a lot of customers? Is that what, I mean, whatever it is that you want, just know what you want because that the actions that you take are actually going to fulfill what you're creating in your mind. So have that vision. We're always creating our business twice, first in our mind and then in what we do. Now, there are a couple different classifications of invites that I want to cover with you guys. The first is that you're, you're, you're going to kind of choose which way you're going to invite, whether you're what we call top down or bottom up. Top down is what we say is more of a business invite. It's leading with the business opportunity first. I look at the person, I don't think there's any one right or wrong answer to whether you lead with the product or lead with the business, because what our numbers tell us is that 50% of customers are going to transition to be customers. And 50% of our business partners are sometimes, 50% of them are going to act like customers over time and maybe not necessarily be actively sharing. However, it's up to you. You look at the person on your list and ask yourself, is that a person that you would love to be business partners with if they saw it like you do? If the answer is yes, then you're gonna use a business invite. If it's no, like maybe you say, no, that's my one of my patients or one of my clients, or I really love that person, but I don't like them. I don't really wanna be in business with them. Then the answer is lead with the product. What my experience is, is that when I lead with the business opportunity and share the business opportunity, the products are a default. Maybe they're not interested in the business, but they might say, you know what, I'd love to get those products in my body. However, when I lead with the product, the default is, let me do some research or let me think about it, I'll get back to you. It's nothing. So that's why I typically don't wanna be the judge, unless it's someone I really don't like, they're not an in integrity or there's something that there's just a, a real um, values conflict or maybe they're one of my clients and I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna change that, that practitioner relationship. Um, other than that, I always leave with the business opportunity. Let's start though with the product invite. And this is pretty simple. It's straight out of the, the blueprint. It's simple. What um, the simple, it's like, I've got something I want to share with you. What is it? It's an ABC news primetime investigative report. When can we schedule a time to watch it? Or if I could, if I sent you this ABC News primetime investigative report, it's about five minutes long. Um, when would you have a chance to watch it so I can get back on the phone with you? Because you need to know about this. And if you have any questions, I want to connect with you with somebody who can give you some more information. It blew me away. The most important thing is you're excited, you're passionate, um, you're being of service, right? You've got something to offer and you're not revealing any details. I'm not saying product. I'm not saying this is better than an antioxidant. This is a, you know, I'm not really saying anything. I'm just like, you got to see this thing. I've got something I want to share with you. In fact, some people go to do a business invite and you use that word share and you end up with a lot of customers. I don't know if that, if anybody's had that experience, but what I find is, Share ends up being a lot of customers. 
Um, so the business invite is a little bit different. What I recommend is that whatever you're, and, and you want it to be authentic, it's you. I can give you my formula for how I do a business invite, but your invite has to be your own language and it's gotta be the truth of what you're inviting to. So what I usually recommend is that I, I always say, say the word business. It should never be a surprise once you schedule an appointment with somebody to you know, do an exploration or invite them to a meeting that they're actually there to look at a business opportunity, right? So always use the word business. The second thing is give a compliment. You want that person that you're inviting to feel that there is something of potential value that you see in them, that if they end up seeing this like you do, they would maybe have something to bring to the table. They want to feel good. So you're going to make, I like using virtues language to, to give a compliment. There's a, an app you can get through the app store. It's called um, Virtues Reflection Cards. They're like 99 cents or a dollar, something like that. And it's got a list of virtues languaging. I recommend before you call to do an invite, just writing down a few compliments. But even if you said you're a sharp, sharp girl, or I always seen you as like such a, a driven person, you know, employee or whatever it is that you want to say about that person, have that compliment written down and take your time when you offer that compliment. Because to me, that compliment is such an important part of the invite. It's like a gift. If nothing else, even if they're, they're not open to exploring, you have the opportunity to give them a gift in that invite. So, um, and, and don't confuse a compliment with a judgment. If you're saying something like, I thought of you because um, you're in the health and wellness field, I think you'd be really interested in this. That's a judgment. Or if you say, you said the other day you want to make some extra money, I think this would be a great way for you to make extra money. That's a judgment. When you make a judgment instead of a compliment, you actually start pushing people away from you. So I recommend, because you want it to be safe, right? The point is, you're inviting someone be, to take a look at a business opportunity partnering up with you in a business and you want it to just be safe to explore so number one say the word business number two give a compliment or a few compliments and number three make a request the request should be an active request and what i mean by that is you you're you're inviting them but hopefully in a way that you're going to engage their participate participation the precip Oh my goodness, you guys. It's not precipitation. It's not, uh, anybody can do this business, you guys. I'm just telling you, you don't have to be anything special to make it to the elite ranks. You want to engage their participation in the exploration, and that is a tongue tie. Um, so what I mean by that is, if you were to ask a question or make a request like, when would you have time to hear what I'm so excited about? versus here's my favorite uh, um, request. So would you be interested in taking a look at doing something with me? So would you be interested in taking a look at doing something with me? It's a little bit different because the first one is like a passive engagement. Sure, you say, I'm so excited about this business. Um, I wanna share it with you. When can we schedule time to do that? Your friends are, of course, they're gonna say, sure, I'd like, you know, let's do it tonight. I've got time right now, whatever. They're just gonna listen. And what's going to happen at the end? Well, what you're going to find is that a lot of people say, well, good luck. That sounds really exciting. Good luck with that thing. However, if you say, would you be interested in taking a look at doing something with me? You're going to find that people will take a look at the ABC News Club, get a little overview on what's going on, hopefully from a third party or a third party tool like a recorded Zoom or an online Zoom, or they're coming to get the information at a live meeting. Some other way they're going to get the information, not you, because we don't want to use our mouth as a tool. And, and they're going to be evaluating. They're going to be thinking like, is this for me, right? Is this real? And can I do this? That's how they're going to, that's what they're going to be looking to evaluate. So your invite just needs to be really simple, very authentic, but very you. My business invite, if you want to hear what it sounds like is, hey, Joe, um, how are you? you? And I tell them, I said, you know what I've been up to for the past couple of years, right? I've been a stay-at-home mom, right? And they're like, yeah. Well, I'm calling for a specific reason. I don't really have a lot of time, but um, 
I recently was introduced to this business opportunity and I have gotten so excited about it. I'm telling you, I'm going for this thing. And right now I'm in the process of setting up my business and lining up partners to build it with. And I thought of you because you're one of the most dynamic, um, driven, successful, fun, and loving people that I know. And I'm just wondering if you had any interest in taking a look at doing something with me. Sure. Yeah. What do you got? Well, when can, when can we schedule a time to get together? Because I'd love to, ABC News did a primetime investigative report on this when it launched. I'd love to watch it together. And if it's, you know, something that's interesting, I'd love to introduce you to one of my business partners in another 15 minutes. We can give you just a high level overview of what we're doing and you can see if it's something that resonates with you. We can always explore more. Okay, great. So that's just my basic invite. There's lots of good ones out there. I'll tell you, with people that I don't know very well, like people in my cold market, I love, hey, such and such. Um, just wondering, do you keep your options open for other ways of making money outside of what you do here as a lawyer or outside of what you do here in the restaurant? Another one I love is, um, let me ask you a question, Kelly. If the right business opportunity came along, would now be a good time in your life to take a look? I just want to find out, is somebody open and is the timing right? I don't need to waste my time trying to convince someone this is a great opportunity. I'm qualifying them a little bit before I spend my time exploring the opportunity. So I know I kind of rushed through this, this business invite, but you guys, I got to tell you, use your own voice, be passionate. You might want to take some time to get yourself, get your vibration high, envision what you're saying yes to. and don't be attached, just be detached, right? We don't care, we're not here to manipulate people. We don't need to like strong arm people into getting this information. We just are coming from a place of service. We're offering a gift. If their timing's right and they wanna check it out, let's explore it. And there's so many different ways to do that. So um, we're gonna move on because I got a barking dog in the background and I'm excited because our last couple minutes of this call, we are going to hear from Arthur and Kelly Lupsha and they're my cousins. In fact, you guys are all my cousins on this call. I love it. Um, so I'm gonna read your bio because I'll be honest, I didn't have a ch chance to memorize it and I don't wanna to botch it up. But um, Kelly Lepsha studied at the University of Arizona for her bachelor's degree and at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, I didn't know that, um, Minnesota for her master's in physical therapy. Arthur studied at San Francisco State and received his master's and doctoral degree from Western University. They both specialize in the recovery and treatment of neurological disorders, specifically sufferers of stroke and traumatic brain injury. And they've been doing this for over the past 20 years. Kelly and Arthur have their own private practice in Laguna Niguel, which is in California. I know that much part, that part. And they specialize in this treatment. Thank you guys, because I know you have helped so many people. I mean, they've helped people all over the United States. One thing I can tell you is they have huge hearts. And I don't want to, I don't know, that's all you really need to know about Kelly and Arthur. They're beautiful people. They're building a very successful business. And I am very excited to turn the call over to you. So um, Kelly and Arthur, take it away. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you so much for, uh, for hosting tonight and, and giving your time to the entire team. Thanks to Sean and Michelle Poe for running this on a weekly basis. Um, thanks to Stu Dickey, uh, Stu Dickey, Stu <laughs> Brody and Carrie Dickey. <laughs> Maybe it should be Stu Dickey. Um, Stu Brody and Carrie Dickey for, you know, being the incredible leaders they are. And um, I guess we also want to thank uh, Stu for his clairvoyance and knowing that we are on our way to Pro 6. We're not there yet, <laughs> but um, <laughs> he did put out that we're Pro 6. So apparently it's coming sooner than we realized. Yeah, I'm going to give you guys an end. So it is, right? Just yeah, like, it so it is. I mean, whatever it is, you got to just got to put it out there as if it's already happened so maybe That's that right. was a blessing in disguise i'm seeing it it's coming it's absolutely coming. thank you marcy you guys such a pleasure and you know we're going to try to take 10 minutes here and be really concise we've been asked to talk about nrf2 activation in relation to the brain but so that's what we're going to speak on. But we do feel it's vitally important for us to say that the vitality stack is truly everything these people need to be on in combination for their cellular health 
for prevention of injuries to their brain as well as recovery of their brain. So and, and, and truly maintenance. I mean, yes. to maintain a healthy brain and healthy brain function, you know, the combination we have in Vitality Stack, a, a probiotic with, with a prebiotic included, because the gut is the second brain, and we this over and over again, you know, the omegas, which are so important for cellular integrity, for brain health, eye health, heart health, um, and then NERF2 and NERF1, again, crucial to good functioning, proper functioning brains, but we're going to talk specifically about NERF2 activation and why we see this being so vitally important for our patients with brain issues. So you guys, I'm just going to start and walk you through a little pathway, and it may have happened to you or a family member or a friend, and think about, like, have you ever hit your head on something? Maybe you came up under a counter and smacked your head hard, right? We Something like that, or we didn't realize that something was there, and or we fell, I mean. Happened to me just the other day, a cold morning outside and, and the back of the car starts coming down all by itself and I didn't realize and I walked right into the back of the car. You know, we, we all do those silly things, right? So when that happens, imagine if that was your leg or your arm, what would you guys end up seeing on your body, right? You'd end up with a bruise. A bruise, bruise. Well, we just can't see what's going on in our brain, but that's actually really what happens. And, and you may have no symptoms of anything. Okay. And, and really have no idea. But then here's what happens is maybe you have something repeated or maybe the next time it's hit even harder. Mm -hmm. So maybe you do end up with a little bit of a headache. Maybe you do end up feeling like a little just foggy Fuzzy or not yeah. clear. Um, maybe you end up with vision issues. Um, there's so many things that could happen because symptoms of concussion are vast. They're vast. So, and concussion truly is brain injury, guys. Yes. I mean, it's not something to be taken lightly or taken mildly. Uh, anytime you're knocking your head, anytime you're having any kind of neurological symptoms after knocking your head, concussion is something that needs to be taken very, very seriously. So from concussion, we're going to move into severe brain injury and stroke, but I want to back you up for just a second because, you know, throughout medicine, I think all of us realize in our health journey that if something happens to us, medically, most of the time it can be fixed through surgery, through medication, right? Through a hip replacement, through, you know, rehab of a sprained ankle. You can have a heart transplant. And a lot of times people wait till something happens and then we deal with it, right? There's not a lot of prevention, although that's, of course, exactly where we're leading this charge of nutrigenomics is leading into prevention. So imagine this, you do have an injury to your brain a traumatic brain injury, a stroke, there's no protocol to heal your brain. Like there's no brain transplant. There's no simple fix. It is the most vital organ and delicate organ that we have. I mean, truly, as Kelly said, you know, we understand the, the healing times and the repair times for, for every structure and every organ in the body. Every structure and every organ in your body could actually be replaced with one exception. The only thing we don't have the ability to transplant at this point is our brains. For that matter, I always tease our kids that actually their brains are far more valuable than ours because theirs, ha theirs haven't been used yet. You know, <laughs> ours are really used. Theirs are really unused. No, just kidding. Okay. So, you know, with all of this, as we get into nerf 2 activation, what we want you to understand is nerf 2 activation is for protection of the brain. For all the cellular structures within the brain, it is critical to actually build that neuroprotection, and there's proof of that. So all of our kids, right, they're, they're in sports. We have four children, and two of our four have ended up with concussions, not sport-related, interestingly enough. So protecting their brain, so when an incident happens, they get hit, something, you know, whatever happens, their brain has the most protection possible. So whether it's our children, whether it's us today, from a concussion issue, it's going to be backwards, babe. Oh, yeah. And from a, a neurological degenerative disease, it is protection. And, of course, after somebody has an insult of a brain injury or a stroke, critical for nerve 2 protection. And I don't know if you guys know, but actually, stroke is the leading cause of mortality and morbidity in the United States and has the biggest financial ramifications in the world. And so, again, think about the power we all have that could lead to prevention from having people suffer from stroke 
and or protecting people hopefully from suffering from brain injury or concussion type symptoms. The article that I was holding up here guys is from Molecular Neurobiology. This is in PubMed. Uh, and it's the title is NRF2 weaves an elaborate network of neuroprotection against stroke. So just imagine the more you're activating that NRF2 protein in your bodies, the better its job it's doing to actually build that protective barrier against having a stroke. It also, we know, builds a protective barrier against concussions, against head injury. And, and this is why our son, our own son, who is an avid football fanatic and plays for his high school, we said, okay, son, if you're going to play, we're going to do everything we can to protect you. And we bought him the best pads and we bought him the best helmet. But you know what? He's absolutely activating his Nerf 2 protein at the highest possible level we can. Absolutely. And one other article, you guys, I just want to um, read just a quick abstract from. It's called Oxidative Stress and its Role in the Pathogenesis of Ischemic Stroke. But it talks about oxidative stress accumulates in patients that have had a stroke, okay? So oxidative stress accumulates due to the imbalance of pro-oxidants and antioxidants. And consequent excess production of reactive oxygen species. So in all of us, we have a normal balance of our, our pro-oxidants and our antioxidants. But after somebody has suffered a stroke, they have a very strong imbalance, therefore leading to a much higher level of oxidative stress going on in their brain at that time. And if we can try so, to make that super simple, basically yes. <laughs> what we're just saying is that due to the damage in the brain and cellular death after a stroke, there are chemicals given off in your brain that cause inflammation, that cause swelling, that cause more cellular death. And all that cellular death just junks up everything in your brain and sends your oxidative stress through the roof. It sends that rusting of your brain through the roof. And if you don't proactively knock that down and get it under control, things get worse, not better. And this is why in that first 24 to 72 hours after the initial stroke, we see patients actually get worse and worse and worse versus better. We call it the extension of the stroke. Absolutely, you guys. So again, thank you. We only have 10 minutes. I just want to put out there to all of you guys that if you at all follow Sharice Matthews, Sharice Matthews has an amazing interview with Arthur. You guys can pull that up for reference. It gives some great, um, great information. And then Jenny Crane, if any of you are Facebook friends with Jenny Crane, or you can just go follow her page, or my page, because I put it on mine as well, Kelly Lupsha, she interviewed me and has a really great interview as well on the same topic. Wow, well, thank you guys so much. You know, I, I didn't give you the heads up I was going to ask you this, but I'm just wondering, like, in your experience, I hear all the, everything that you just said from a scientific perspective, but as people lower their oxidative stress by activating the pathway, oops, Diane Smith, if you can please mute your line. Um, if, if, if you could maybe share a story of, of uh, one, of your, one of your favorite stories of patients where you've actually seen like something change in someone's life when they start lowering their oxidative stress. Um, yeah, we'll tell you about our very, very first experience. And, okay. and I'll make this overview, you guys, that every single stroke is different. They present different. It's like crazy. There's no two alike. Right. And so the, the things that we've seen are vast from decrease um, pain, increased sensation, increased movement, better cognitive focus, Changes of course, in speech patterns, um, decreased spasticity. So we've seen lots of different stuff, but Arthur's going to share probably the most astounding result that we saw. And we know protanum is, you know, products are not meant to cure, um, cure prevent, mitigate anything. This is really not. one person's anecdotal story. Thanks yeah. for that, Mercy. Yes. Um, so we had a gentleman who was, um, about a year, year and a half post-stroke when we met him. Uh, when we met him, he had no active movement in his right arm or right leg and he couldn't speak. Um, over a six month period of time, I got his leg starting to work a little bit. He could start activating. I got him to the point where he could uh, walk with me. Um, two, almost two years of therapy before we, before we were introduced to ProTandem. So at this point, he's three and a half to four years post-stroke when I had just learned about protanum from Michael Epstein, our wonderful Michael Epstein, and I walked into the office. And at this point, I was only seeing this gentleman once a week. We had scaled back therapy all the way to just once a week. 
uh, really just to keep things moving. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a routine with him and my routine consisted of, he would come in, I'd get him on the table, we would stretch. And then we'd do some exercises where he'd be like pulling his leg down with a bungee cord and then we'd do some walking and he was walking about 50 feet with me advancing his right foot every single time and helping with his weight shift and helping him stand on his right leg. Well, we introduce him to ProTan and his wife takes one look at it and says, okay, we're going to take it. And in fact, if we're going to take it, we're going to be distributors. I thought, wow, this business is simple. First person I ever talked to. That's fun. Okay. Yeah, go figure. Um, and he was a pretty big guy. I mean, he was about 6'2", 240 pounds, um, retired uh, colonel from the Marine Corps Reserves and an educator in the athletic department at a university here. And so we started him right away on two a day. Now, Kelly and I did not see him for two weeks because the next week we were out of town. And so it was two weeks later. So nothing changed in his therapy intervention. Nothing changed at all in his life except for adding two pro tandem a day. Nerf two. Nerf two. At the same Nerf time or different One times? morning, one night. One okay. morning, one night. Um, the next time I saw him, I asked his wife, so how are things going? She just smiled. I said, okay. So we get him on the mat. We stretch him. I attach the bungee cords to his leg. And normally I'd have to help him by helping him pull down. We'd get like 10 reps. Then we'd rest and do another 10. Yeah. He starts slamming his foot on the mat. Not 10 times, not 20 times, 50 times. And then he did another 50 and another 50 and another 50. And at 250 repetitions, I finally said, okay, let's, let's, let's change gears. Let's, let's stand up and walk. So I get him uh, sitting up on the edge of the mat and I help him stand. And Marcy, I was not even prepared. And he took a step forward with his right foot. Wow. First time ever he moves his right foot on his own. He walked the 50 feet across my gym, 50 feet back. I still had to help with weight shift. I still had to be there to protect his leg. So it was stay up. Over the course of the next two to three months, he started calling his wife by name for the first time in four years. He, this gentleman was aphasic, so he could he not talk. talk. Started telling her, I love you. He started singing the Marine Corps, he, he, Marine Corps hymn tunes. He started navigating his own environment around this house. Um, and talking to his children on the phone uh -huh. that he's never been able to have a conversation on the phone before. We even got to the point where with help, he was actually starting to go up and down stairs. Um, you know, unfortunately, about uh, seven, eight months later, uh, he passed away in his sleep at the age of 80. Oh. But completely peacefully. But his last six, eight months of his life and his, and his wife's life together was completely change be and i truly believe because of these products because nothing else was different that's awesome well and he had the love and support of you too so i'm sure that was a that was an important component but thank you so much for sharing that story thank you for sharing this and such important information with us thank you everybody for for being on the call um i hope that this week you will focus on income producing activities which are talking to a new prospective customer or a new business prospective business partner or enrolling a new prospective customer or a new prospective business partner. That's what counts, you guys. We have a gift. As you guys can, can hear it tonight, these products change people's lives one person at a time. And in doing so, by each of us, just, just having the courage to reach out, just like someone did for all of us, we are going to change the world together. So with that, I'm giving you guys a big kiss and a big thank you. Have a wonderful week.